Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of I the Dragon, Cruel and Beautiful, Rabbit Hole, Lauren Frey, and the upcoming Jaw of the Dragon. And I finally had the time to sit down and watch the Super Mario Bros. movie. I've been talking about this with... Uh you know, people on the Discord and on my community tab for a long time. I uh, just could not do it day one. There was a lot of things in the way. I almost didn't get to see it today because of, uh, you know, personal problems and some things that came up. But, like, you know, I did manage to, I did manage to, like, drag myself out of bed and go. And uh, for the first, uh, 80% of the movie, let's say. I'm sure it's like probably a little bit more than that. I, I was having a great time, right? You know, sitting down in the theater, uh, it was nearly empty. There weren't like a ton of people there. I'm not sure <laughs> if it was, uh, if you were looking at it from, if, uh, if my theater was any, any 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 real indication, this movie didn't do very well at all. But I think I just went at a bad time. Um uh, this this movie, like for the first eighty percent of it, was was fantastic. Like I just was, you know, just really over the moon about it for like the first eighty percent of it or so. Like I thought it had great character moments, uh, great character dynamics, great, uh, just great character building moments. Like it's it's a very character driven movie, right? It's very fast paced. It really does a a lot to really establish like the Mario brothers, um, you know, their relationship, uh, or more specifically Mario in his relationship with other people, right? I, I think that's the thing that the film really excels at in that it really wants to focus on like, you know, Mario and his relationship with Luigi, right? You know, how the, their brotherly bond and stuff like that, how they'll do anything for each other. And like, you know, their, their history of growing up together and just, you know, how they started a business and, you know, their, their adventures in the Mushroom Kingdom, right? You have like Mario and his relationship with Peach, right? You have like, you know, you get, really get this sense, like watching this movie that they are falling in love with, with each other, right? This is, I think, the best character dy dynamic the, the characters ever had because it really showcases just what makes them drawn to each other, right? It really, like, it really demonstrates very strongly that, yes, uh, Mario and Peach are are great together. They are the perfect match. They, they are in love in spite of their completely different like life situations right like uh, they're really not that different right it's uh, it's kind of remarkable how well they managed to pull that off and you know even with like characters like donkey kong like uh, they really do a great job like establishing this uh, relationship that really had never been fully explored before with like you know uh donkey kong like forming a rivalry with mario and then like they save each other's lives and then they kind of have this like really bizarre like uh this really like vitriolic uh relationship like this really vitriolic friendship it's legit Legit, really charming to watch like it is legit like organic it feels original it feels fresh and it feels like true to the characters in a lot of ways like it, it just all around feels like a really good adaption of the super mario games now that's the thing though is that this is an adaption right this isn't i don't like using the term movie to describe this because when you go down to like really just break everything down to like its base elements and really talk about this as a film, like the plot is just them going from place to place and then like things happening. Like there's explosions, there are like bright colors, there are like, you know, all these characters, but like, you know, places you recognize as a long time Nintendo fan, you'll notice like references to punch out to to Kid Icarus, to Donkey Kong, and Mario should have plays Kid Icarus at one point. Like, you know, you get all these cool callbacks to, like, past Nintendo games, you know, references to classic Mario power-ups, like the Mini Mushroom, the Cat Mario. You have, like, you know, great, you know, aspects taken from, like, the new Super Mario Bros. games, 3D World, uh, like, Galaxy, right? All of it's, like, kind of thrown into a blender and just, like, comes out with this product but like it, it does come off like a product right like when you get right down to it like the plot is so straightforward it's honestly not even worth talking about you know like mario goes to the mushroom kingdom right he meets peach and they go on an adventure together right they uh you know recruit the kongs and they fight they fight bowser right it's like it comes off as significantly less than Something like Super Mario Adventures, the comic, which I think was probably the inspiration for this, or it was probably like the superior version of the same kind of setup. Because a lot, what a lot of people didn't like about this movie going into it is this is just like, oh, um, 
is this really going to be a Mario Bros. movie? Is this really going to, like, Luigi's captured early on, and uh, Peach is, like, more assertive than he she usually is, but, like, we've actually seen this plot line done really, really well in the past in the Super Mario Adventures comic. Like, it is an incredibly funny, inventive, charming adventure, you know, in combat form. Uh, I would say it's probably the best, like, Mario Mario adaption ever made in that sense, because it is incredibly funny. I, I really need to read it again and then do a proper review of it because it's been so long. But I found myself like thinking a lot about that comic as I was as I was uh, during the build up to this in to this release, like in, in particular in regards to like the the concerns that Princess Peach would be mishandled in this in this film. That was that was kind of what I, I've been talking about a lot. Uh, I even uh, so much so that I even talked about it during the uh, release trailer, uh, the reveal trailer where they showed off like Peach for the first time. Like I was just like, oh, wow, uh, certain people are not going to like that. She's actually going out and like doing things but that's that's actually been true to the character since since the very beginning you know bowser initially kidnapped her in super mario bros because like you know she had magic powers that dispel the the magic block thing right she's been playable since super mario bros 2 like in super mario bros 3 she isn't kidnapped until the end right so peach like actually going out and doing things or like not being kidnapped is not all that unusual for the mario brand at all right it's uh per perfectly in line with the character and uh, you know, watching this movie, watching like everything building up to it, it seemed like Peach was, uh, you know, really gearing up to be like the at the same as she's always been. But I think more so than most other characters, Peach really suffers from this very pervasive problem that I, I really couldn't put my finger on it while I was watching the movie. It wasn't until like I was driving home that it really like kind of dawned on me like what my problem with Peach was and. It was the fact that, like, the filmmakers seem unwilling to really put her in a vulnerable position at all, right? You know, when you compare, like, what happens to, like, Mario, to Luigi, to Donkey Kong, like, those guys are always getting beaten up. Like, things are always happening to them. Like, they're they're barely in control of the situation. They have to, like, overcome all these various obstacles. And, like, you know, they, 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 um, they have to over – they um, they have to rise to the challenge and, like, you know – accomplish these tasks right they have to like you know you know save the day like rise up to the occasion save the day like save uh save save everyone captured uh defeat bowser and stuff like that stand up to bowser and stuff like that but peach is like weirdly never in that position right like a uh, peach like if she she's always like out doing things uh you know with the others but like uh she's never shown like getting hit she's never shown like really like struggling at all like the film uh and when she's kidnapped by bowser like near the end it happens for like five minutes and then like she frees herself and you know just kind of gets the jump on him right for a good long while now now this isn't exactly unusual for the character like i mentioned but like the issue is not the fact that she's proactive in fact, I kind of actually like her personality in this. I think she's very charming. Like I mentioned, like I think her relationship with Mario is genuine and very sweet. Uh, the problem is that like she's never shown to be like vulnerable. She's never allowed to be in a compromising position. She's never allowed to struggle. And as a result of that, I was as a result of that, like unlike every other character in the film, Mario, Luigi, Donkey Kong, even Cranky Kong to a certain extent, like you never really feel concerned for Peach's safety at all. Other than maybe being forced into, like, marrying Bowser, you know, like, uh, leading up to the climax of the film, right? And, and that's not really – I don't know. It, it just feels more – it feels more like a cop out. It feels like they weren't really willing to commit to the bit, you know. Like they weren't really, they weren't really willing to like establish this character, you know, this you know strong, capable leader of the Mushroom Kingdom, and they weren't willing to follow through with it and actually show that strong, capable leader, like full, like being forced into a compromising position. They were not able to like. They were not willing to establish a conflict, right? And as such, like, near the end of the film, you just kind of feel like things are happening, but, like, you don't really feel invested. Like, you know, by the time, like, Peach pulls out the ice flower, you you, you just get – you almost get this sense that, like, you know, like, uh, she, there was never – no one was ever in any, in any real danger, honestly. Like, it, it just feels like – it just feels hollow in a lot of sense, uh, in a lot of ways, right? And, and in general, like I think a lot of the action sequences kind of kind of feel that way. Like I, I said, this was character uh, driven, right? Like when it comes like when things actually happen, the things that the film is, excels at are like character interactions, dynamics, and like relationships, right? Like that's 
what makes what'll make the fans really really happy. But when it, when it comes to like the the world building and just the general like what actually happens in the movie like action wise like it feels so fake and so artificial and just kind of hollow with like the world design and the layout and just kind of like just kind of the the general like what happens right like there, there's a sequence like when they're on rainbow road like oh we're going to we're going to like take a bunch of carts we're going to go to a place and we're going to jump bowser and so like they go on this highly conspicuous <laughs> highly conspicuous uh rainbow road you know this entire army like you know bowser is spying on them they never like bring up the possibility that like maybe he's a, he knows what we're up to they don't they don't prepare for this at all and they get jumped and then there's, there's, there's this like mario kart battle sequence where you have a bunch of guys just just fighting each other and you know it's not it's not a bad sequence at all in, in certain respects but like when it comes down to like you know the world building aspect like when when that guy comes out at the end like turns into a blue shell right and like you know destroys the destroys the track like it just feels like a lot of things in this movie do like it came out of nowhere right it feels like this movie just wants to go like from place to place to place with like no real organic build up to it and and, and like early on that actually kind of works right like when mario is dropped in the mushroom kingdom they're just like oh yeah let's go see peach and she'll help you and that's that's really all you need to get going i actually really liked the fast pace like in the first 80 percent of the movie but like you know as it goes on as like the world starts getting more established like you get this feeling that like this should start making sense like you should get a vibe for like how things are structured here and how like things work like you know what the like what these people are like but in a lot of sense like you don't really know anything about them like you know when they go to the jungle kingdom which uh you know i i couldn't help but think to myself that like i really wish it was called kong country that that just seems more more fitting for me that's what i would have done kong country that I, I i think that's funnier but like you know when they go to the jungle kingdom and like deal with the kongs and like the, the kong greets them at the door i'm just like is this an actual character like is this swanky kong because like i i thought it might have been like a, a redesigned swanky kong considering like the suit and like the the colors and kind of looking like dk but like it's just a guy like right and like you kind of like learn after that that like oh yeah there are a lot of different kongs here like you see chunky you see diddy you see dixie they don't really do anything but they're there but there are a bunch of other like nondescript kongs like more kongs that we've ever seen ever like kongs seem to be like their own species in this um uh, in this setting in this like universe as opposed to like you know the the family dynamic they they established in in um in donkey kong country or like maybe they've always been like this like i i don't know like i can my point is that like we've never seen like like this many kongs in like any any mario property ever is what i'm saying and like it, it's just things like that that just make you think that like if you're a hardcore fan like you'll notice stuff like this. You'll notice things that like are just kind of like odd or like, you know, are, are taking creative liberties. But then, and then there's like, you know, just stuff that just, it feels like the creators, the filmmakers did not want, it's like they took a lot of, lib, like they, they took like plenty of liberties with the source material, right? But like for some reason they were unwilling to like take, uh, they, they were unwilling to like, to realistically like grow the property they were like in a way they wanted like it's it's too video gamey in, in a sense and like it as a result of that you, you kind of feel like conflicted on like wait a minute like does this make sense does is this any oh, anyway well pff, what i'm getting at here is that like, it's strange like seeing strange floating blocks in in midair like it's strange like you know uh, how the characters have to like hit the blocks to get power-ups it's it's weird how like the power-up concept is established where like you know every single time in this movie when they wouldn't need a power up they just they just hit a block and it comes out right like it, it just it just feels like the world building just isn't all there like when you compare this adaption to something like uh, super mario bros z which uh you know is, a, is kind of an interesting comparison like you know they took the creative liberty of well he took the creative liberty uh, super mario bros z was made by one guy uh super mario bros z took a creative liberty in that like you know they utilize power-ups they use power-ups but like you know typically what happens is that mario just carries a bunch of them with him and then he just like pulls them out whenever he wants to use them right like you know the movie has this depiction of like oh yeah the power-ups they they give you all this crazy power but they also uh, you know they also go away if you get hit 
which, you know, is it's too rooted in the video games. Like when it comes to like this adaption in the film, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Like, again, like I feel like I really appreciate like, the attention to detail and like the, um, the, uh, the refusal the refusal to like uh, really change all that much from the source material to like you know to stick to the games but at the same time like there are things like this that just you know don't make a lot of sense when it comes to the film like to, when it comes to like a movie and I think the film really really struggles with that like w when the climax hits and like um you know Mario and Luigi beat Bowser like you feel as if first of all Luigi does not have a real character arc he's just kind of there and second of all it just kind of ends you know like you just kind of get this feeling that like uh, wait that's it that's that's all that happens that's all they needed to do and it's such a shame because, like, going into this, you know, seeing the characters, like, being built up in that, like, first 80%, seeing that, like, you know, these characters interact, like, them establishing, like, the far-out fantasy universe, like, I would have said this is, like, you know, a great movie, you know? But, like, seeing seeing them, like, you know, unwilling to, like, commit to a real plot, seeing them, like, just, just like, <sighs> seeing them, like, uh, kind of fumble the ball near the ending, like, failing to, like, utilize a ton of different characters, like, uh, Bowser Jr., you can see, like, come at Mario while he's in the raccoon suit, and then he just gets blasted away. There's no explanation as to, like, who he is, or, like, what he's doing. Like, in, in general, you see, like, a lot of background characters. Like, King Babam is there. I think you see King Boo. Um, like, it, it, it's weird how, like, a lot of, like, the, the famous Mario characters are present, but then, like, you get, like, more focus on characters like Spike, who I think is, like, the, the guy from Wrecking Crew, like, he, he's supposed to be, like, Mario's boss back when he was, like, a construction worker or whatever. Like, like who cares about that guy, you know? Like, I, I uh, you know, Cranky Kong has a weird voice. Like, th there's all these things you can talk about when it, when it comes to, like, technical problems this movie has, right? From the production, from, like, some of the sound effect decisions. Uh, I think the movie is not nearly as funny as it should be. I think, like, a lot of the the music cues are off. I think there's like a lot of problems, but like when you get right down to it, like it is an extremely fun movie to watch, right? This is probably the best interpretation of the, of Donkey Kong I've ever seen. Like this is exactly how he should act. Like, I think, I, I think, I think Seth Rogen's DK is like my favorite character. Uh, incredibly fun, incredibly fun character with a lot of personality, very few lines, but like really kind of sells the bit as being like, you know, Mario's friend and rival in this universe. Right. Uh, it, it's interesting that they uh, decided to go with this route of having like Donkey Kong play such a prominent role because, um, you know, I think most people would have expected Yoshi to be like the first sidekick character utilized, but like going with DK and like focusing on like cranky Kong was like actually a really cool move. But like, I, I, again, like, oof. It's supposed to be the Super Mario Bros. movie, right? Like again, I think I think maybe focusing more on like Luigi in this 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 film rather than DK might have led to like you know you know a more robust robust plot, you know, because it, it feels too much like they're they're going all over the place and there's just there there are just like issues with like you know you feel like sometimes. They do something really great, you know, like establish Mario and Peach's relationship and then like do nothing with it. They do something really great, like have Mario and DK become friends, right? In, in like really great, like really wonderful circumstances. And then they just like do nothing with it other than like a fight scene. Like they, other than like the climax where like DK is like, you know, unapologetically their friends. Like they established like Mario and Luigi having a family and they set up like these really interesting family dynamics about how Mario is like, you know, a really confident go-getter, but like how the fam how the family is always putting him down and how, how he always, how he, how he always feels like he wishes he could be a hero and how he like tries and goes out and like does the right thing. That's like, that's so good. Such great character building, such a great – that is Mario, right? That is what the Mario brand is all about, like, at its core. But, like, like plot-wise. But when you – you do nothing with it, right? Like, again, like, when all is said and done, when, like, the credits roll, like, you just get – Mario and Luigi living in the Mushroom Kingdom with, like, no explanation as to, like, you know, what their relationship with Peach is like, with, you know, DK, their family. Like, I don't even – a lot of their – none of their family members even have names, honestly. It's it, it's just so baffling to me how they could have done, like, so much with this movie, but, like, they really kept it to basics. And – I think that considering there was a teaser at the end and considering that Nintendo has, like, you know, taken steps, like, uh, you know, uh, 
has talked about this a little bit. Like, I, I think it's safe to say that a sequel is in the works. Uh, there, there was like an end credit sequence where Yoshi appears. You do see like a Yoshi, a herd of Yoshis uh, in the film, but like they don't really do anything. They're just running around in the background. Uh, Peach is, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Like, it's clear they're going to do more with the brand. Like, I've heard rumors they're going to produce a Donkey Kong movie. Yes, like, please, please do. Like, I, I love DK in this. He's so funny. Like, my the highlight of the movie for me was, like, that moment when he came out and, like, the DK rap started playing. I was just like, holy fucking shit. This is what I've always wanted. <laughs> like, and again, like, uh, that's what the... That's what the movie is good at. Like, it's not funny. Like, it's not plot driven. But like, if you're a big fan of the property, and let's face it, Mario is like the second biggest video game property ever, only behind Pokemon. Like, everyone is a fan of the property. Like, you're going to have a good time seeing this. Like, when you, in spite of all the problems, in spite of like everything you wish they could have done better. Like, you know, there are fight scenes that feel like kind of cop outs. Like, you know, Mario gets the crap beat out of him by DK until he gets ha just happens to get a power up. He just happens to like get, turn the tables on him. Like, it's well animated. It's well animated. It's interesting, but like, it feels a little bit too short and it feels a little bit too much like a cop out. Uh, just like the ending, actually. Um, you know, you there are things you can talk about when it comes to, like, Peach's characterization and how she seems too much like Daisy. You know, how she's utilized in the story. You can argue about Luigi not being all that present and not really deserving to, like, you know, be part of, like, the Super Mario Brothers or whatever. Uh, alongside Mario, who more than, like, well deserves his status as, like, the hero of this story. I would go so far as to say, like, Mario is one of the most, like, inspirational, like you know, working class characters I've, I've ever seen in a movie. Like, he, he's legit great in this. Uh, Chris Pat's Mario is great, by the way. Um, again, like, Jack Black's Bowser is great. Uh, Anya Taylor-Joy as Peach is great. Um, Luigi is great. Uh, Charlie Day, I think Luigi's voice's name is. Uh, yeah, 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 they're definitely a really good voice cast here. It, it just feels like in a lot of cases they're underutilized. Like, I think Jack Black should have been funnier. Like, I think him, be Bowser, like, playing the piano and, like, singing about how much he loves Peach <laughs> should have been a lot funnier than it actually was. And, and anyway, it, it is kind of funny, but you don't, like, laugh at it. You just kind of, like, take it in and just appreciate the moment. Like, the artistry of it. Like, it seems like it's not laugh out loud funny, honestly. But there are, like, plenty of moments in this where you're just kind of like, oh, yeah, that's kind of that's amusing. That's like well made. It's interesting. It's a creative idea. Like I, I would describe this more as like an adventure movie rather than like a straight up comedy. But like, mm -hmm. kind of kind of comparing it to like One Piece or something, it seems about in line with what I would describe it as because it's very cartoony. It's very, it's very rooted in like uh, the Mario series of roots, but it really does have a lot a lot of heart to it. It really does have a lot of elements to it that really make it shine. Uh, I. I hesitate to call this like the best video game movie ever because uh, you know there are a lot of them I haven't seen, but like they have a they have a history of just not being very good. Like um, th there are actually a lot of things like that. I think the original live action version might have done better than this. If you actually like, uh, for one thing, I think. Um, I think the dynamic, I think like having Mario and Luigi be like together and kind of establishing like, like I mentioned earlier, I like the idea of them being like not having any other family other than each other, right? That's kind of like my favorite interpretation of that. And that came from this movie, you know, Luigi being in a relationship with Daisy came from this movie, even though like Daisy is apparently Princess Toastal in that version. It's again, like, I'm not like defend, I'm not saying that movie is great, but like, you know, there, there are definitely things about it that, like, I, I do look back on, like, very, very fondly, right? There, there are definitely things about it that, like, do resonate with fans over the years, right? There's definitely, like, things to appreciate about that movie as well as this. Um, this is, I, I think, um, I, I really enjoyed the Super Mario Bros. movie, right? In, in spite of all my problems with it, in spite of, like, you know... Like the the problems with the climax and like the pacing and like some the way some of the characters were utilized, like it is at its core like an extremely fun movie. Like kids and younger fans will like adore it, I imagine. Right? It's not plot focused, it's not overly complicated, it's very it's very respectful in source material. Like all the problems that typically come with adaptions, like like with the adaption of the original Super Mario Bros. movie, they're not present here, right? This is the Super Mario Bros. movie. It is the most faithful recreation of, like, the brand that we could hope for. And, it's like, for a Mario fan, this is what I always wanted 
from a Super Mario Bros. movie. This is like, it, it's not exactly how I would would have done it. Like, you know, my my take would have been a lot darker. Uh, those of you who are going to read Jaw the, Jaw the Dragon when it comes out will totally see a lot of the similarities with No More Heroes and like that that kind of thing. like I I um. I feel I feel personally like like this movie just went above and beyond in, in certain respects. Like when it came to the character building, when it came to when it came to like just just the characters and just how they're portrayed. Like this is the this is a great adaption of that format. But they they dropped the ball in so many other places that like it, I would be remiss if I did not talk about them. So I think um, you know my my demands for a movie uh, a sequel. Um, Peach has to get kidnapped this time. Like no. No beating around the bush. No trying to. No trying to like go for the strong woman route. Like Peach needs to get kidnapped, and like for a significant portion of the movie. Like if any character like I would want to see less of in the in the sequel, it is going to be Peach, right? Uh, but yeah, D- more DK, more um, more Luigi, more more Mario, right? Like definitely, we definitely need to like now that the 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 movie and like the setting has been established, like maybe we'll be able to get more laughs out of the sequel. Maybe we'll get more adventures. Maybe we'll get like a more a more well rounded like world. Maybe we'll get like a Donkey Kong spinoff. Who knows? But like, you know, at the end of the day, like I just thought that um, I thought this movie was genuinely really good for what it was. Like I, it wasn't as good as I would have hoped. I was um. I was expecting this to be like one of the best animated movies I've ever seen, but like, uh, yeah, it, it was still pretty good. I, I still enjoyed it. I, I found it. I was entertained by it. And in spite of all my problems with it, this movie does indeed is indeed well worth a watch.